Okay, hello. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to give it about just a moment to let people filter through, which I can see is happening, which is great. I know it takes a minute to for everybody to connect. Um, but yes, a very warm welcome from a very sunny Oxford. Okay, great. Um, I can see that everybody's coming through. So um, let's get started. So thank you very much uh, for joining. It's really nice to, to see you all and a very warm welcome to today's session. So for those of you that I haven't had the chance to speak to, I'm Laura Loudon and I'm the recruitment manager for the Diploma in Organizational Leadership here at Said Business School. Um, and today I'm joined by a panel of former and current students who are going to be sharing more about their experience on the programme and really bringing to life what it's like to be part of this diploma class. So a massive thank you to the four of you for joining me today. Um, we'll have full introductions and go to the Q&A in just a moment. But before we do, I'm just going to kick off with a few key facts about the programme. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Great, so um, the Diploma in Organisational Leadership is a specialised postgraduate master's level qualification awarded by the University of Oxford. It's a one year part-time programme and it consists of four taught modules that are spread across the year. Each module lasts four days and will start on a Wednesday and finish on a Saturday afternoon. And next year, the programme will be held in person in Oxford. Um, in between the modules, you will continue to study from home and this time is spent um, concentrating on the assessments and the pre-readings um, for each module, which, you, which are released about four weeks before, before an, a module starts. In terms of the assessments, and this is something that we'll obviously talk about with the panel shortly, there are three short assignments for modules one, two, and three, um, and they're done remotely and completed online. And then you have one final written assignment of 6,000 words, um, and you complete that after module four. And that's really tailored towards you and a challenge that you would like to focus on. We have one class every year um, with the next intake starting on the 1st of February 2023 and the fee is just over £29,000. Please can I have the next slide. So I just want to give a bit of an overview of, of what the class looks like and again this is something that we'll no doubt bring to life in our conversation but I think the main point to emphasise here is that it's really diverse and there's a, a great deal of experience in the room. Um, so in terms of the class size we tend to have about 60 people so it's a good size. And people join from all over the world. So um, about 80% are international with normally over um, 20 nationalities. So this year we have people joining from Brazil, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Lebanon, Nigeria, Nepal, um, and many more. So there really is a global perspective in, uh, perspective in the room. Um, as well as being internationally diverse, we see a really good mix of sectors and industries. Um, a number of people tend to come from healthcare, education, consulting, media, nonprofit. Um, just to mention a few and um, as you can see we have we have a good gender balance so this year we have 47 percent um, women um, and again the average age is listed here so it's 41 but there's a real range within that so we have some people who are in their late 20s and we have people in their 60s and again there's, there's a there's a real benefit from having that in the room um, can i have the next slide please so now we're moving really straight into the main part of the, of the session. So I'm really pleased to introduce our panel members today. Um, so here with me are Ellie and Bjorn, who have recently completed the programme. So um, they both handed in their final assignment at the start of this year. So congratulations to you both. And uh, Stacey and Saeed, who are current students, and I guess about halfway through the programme. Um, they're both due back for module three in just under two weeks. Um, and I know for, for, for both of you, it's assessment week this week, so you're no doubt in the thick of studying and, and very busy. So, I mean, a massive thank you to all of you for joining and, and giving up your time. So I will just say to everybody um, who's joining online, if you have any questions for the panel, um, feel free to post them in the Q&A function. I have quite a few to get us going anyway, but if you have any specific questions, really happy to answer as many of those as we can. Um, I, I think I saw a few current students who had registered um, to, to, to the session today and, and we're here supporting their classmates. So if you are online, nice to see you, a warm welcome and feel free to hop on, on to chat and to add any extra comments that, that, you, that you want to as well. But um, it would be really nice just to start if we go around with introductions. So um, just hear a little bit more about your backgrounds and your current roles. Um, so Ellie, should we start with you? 
Thanks, Laura. And thank you, everybody, for joining. It's lovely to see so many faces, um, some familiar and some less familiar, which is great. Um, so I'm Ellie Hearn. I'm based in New York City, although I'm from Europe originally. Uh, I'm the founder of Pencil or Ink, a organization that helps other organizations with their cultures and strategy through things like workshops and coaching and consulting. Um, I'm really interested in education in general, but also the business world given my day job. So it's really just great to be here and meet some new faces. Thank you. Björn, should we come to you? Yeah, yeah sure. So my name is Björn. I'm based in Basel, Switzerland. I'm originally from Germany. Um, currently I work as HR business partner and HR site lead for a large pharmaceutical company. And um, the organization that I work with is one of the largest pharmaceutical manufacturing sites in the world. So it, it is quite a beast of an organization. I've been in HR pretty much all my career, uh, which some say is a bane, some say is a blessing, um, but um, we'll talk more about that later. I think when we talk about the motivation to join the program. Great. Stacey. Greetings, everyone. I'm Stacey Hardy Chandler, and I'm currently the Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Social Work Boards, which covers the United States, its territories, and Canada. Um, I've been in this job for about a week. Prior to that, I was the director of the Center for Children and Families for the city of Alexandria. My background is in three distinct but kind of complementary fields. Uh, I'm, uh, my training is in social work. My identity is as a social worker, but I also have a PhD in clinical psychology. And I also had the opportunity to go to law school. So those things kind of merge very nicely. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity and can't wait to share what a wonderful experience this has been for me and uh, in working with my colleagues, so. A well, big week for you. So assessment week and first week of a new job. So yeah, thank you, Stacey. Sure. Great, and last but not least. Hello everyone, my name is Saeed Ben Ali. I'm based in, in Brussels and working in Paris um, for BNP Paribas, uh, the French bank. Um, currently, I'm, I'm leading an IT department where we have the, the payment engine. So whenever a customer pays something, well, this is all processed by, by, a, by a, some IT infrastructure and, and systems. And I'm leading one of them, which is the, the SEPA uh, instant payments. Previously, uh, I used to work uh, in HR as in a management consulting firm as well for about like 16 years and then uh, I decided to move completely from to another area that's why I'm now in the in the payment industry. I will share with you the, the rest in terms of motivation later on. Great well yes actually that leads very nicely I think um, you know a big question for, for all of you is why were you attracted to this program sort of what was your main motivation um, which we've already sort of yeah touched on so um, feel free to, to jump in and I can speak to that a little bit, and I'm sure yeah. others will have lots of color to add given how different our backgrounds are. Um, but I think initially I wanted, I wanted to find a way to gain more knowledge and also really specific and practical tools and frameworks to help sort of better serve my clients, which are also quite diverse from different organizations and industries, but also to grow myself, right? So, so much of what I do is working with other organizations on their professional development. So being able to sort of sharpen the swords, so to speak, was very appealing. And also to help with any sort of imposter syndrome. I mean, it's still there, I think, for so many of us, but it was um, part, a big part of the motivation was to be able to walk into any room and talk confidently about strategy and culture and not sort of feel this sense of, well, should I be here? What do I have to say about this? Um, so that's been brilliant. And also just Oxford specifically offers such a great experience. You can't really beat that name, but also the place is just stunning. Um, and the community that's part of Oxford is really something as well. Like I see Bjorn on the call today, who was in my cohort, and I can see the sort of connections amongst the others as well. It's really just been absolutely wonderful from that perspective. Thank you. Nice to hear. <laughs> I think for me, um, what Ellie talked about sharpening swords, I think for me, it was the notion of leadership being something that we foster in other people. And for me, having the tools and a broader kind of perspective of leadership in order to um, 
kind of help people grow in their own leadership. I do believe, I know it's kind of cliche to say that people can be leaders where they are, but I've seen it. I've seen it in people in all sectors, at all levels, in all kinds of positions. And I certainly wanted to be the kind of person who continued to not only model the leadership that I want to see in other people, but gain the tools and the language and the models and the frameworks that might help them. And I have. And I'll say that, um, well, one of the first things about the curriculum that attracted me was I've been talking about resilience in my field in human services. That's really big, huge, huge, huge. Um, and the when the module four on resilient leadership kind of came up. I, I know that that was an evolution of the curriculum that really attracted me and uh, kind of prompted me to explore more. And then I think that um, just recognizing the applicability of all of those things, not just to the corporate world, as you were talking about, Laura, but to every organization and every system. So it really is my own leadership, but my own leadership toward nurturing others. Great. I think for me, it was really about the um, applicability of the, the things that we learned in the course. When I, when I spoke to, to Kevin, so the person who recruited me onto the course, um, we, we spoke a lot about, you know, is this really just theory or is this something that I could apply straight away? And um, I, I was sort of in, in, intrigued by taking these framework, taking the concepts, the ideas, um, and putting them to, to action straight away. And, and it actually did happen. Um, because I think for me in, in, my, in my career, it was always about being a practitioner, not so much being a theorist. And this is some, something that I really got to appreciate over the course of this year. I could take bits and pieces here and there and just immediately in, inject them into conversations or di discussions that I was having. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, this is the place. Yeah, that's great. And I think, yeah, a really, a really good point. You know, so many people in these programs have, have great experience and have, you know, you need to actually be able to apply that. It's not just all about the theory, it's about how you make it applicable to, to you. Yeah. And right. for me, I, I was in it, somehow in, in my career, I felt like I was stuck. Um, I, I just completed a, a big, big project and uh, putting in place a new IT system. But it was not about the system, it was about the organization and the governance. And this is where I suddenly realized that, hey, I'm not fully equipped from an intellectual point of view, I say, from a knowledge, from capabilities point of view. I was not in, and this is really what drives, drove my, my, my motivation and drives my, my motivation still today and hopefully tomorrow. And I'm fully agree with you, Bjorn, even if it's the first time in my life that I met you, but I had exactly the same approach. Whatever now, it's in the modules can be applicable, can be discussed with colleagues, can even enrich discussions with, not only by, with management, but also with any peer in, in the company. And that's really something that I value a lot and, and, um, and it keeps motivating me. Great. So I guess leading on from that, something, well, something you all mentioned is relevance and application. So how, can you think of any examples of how actually something that you've learned in class has benefited you or, your role or a conversation, yeah, anything that you've actually put into place as a result of doing the program or, or any change that you've seen in your role. Can I? Yeah. Just a quick one. Um, we, 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 are, we, we have the, with the module two, the, the, the strategic mindset. Uh, well, I can tell you that a very concrete example. I, I, I went back to the office of, uh, of my manager and my N plus two, and I told them, um, Gentlemen, we have to think of differently the way we approach uh, the, the program, the imp implementation of IT's programs. And then they start to look at me and say, say, what are you talking about? And I, I start to explain them in a wrap up all these different concepts. And suddenly they said, yeah, you, you need to write a paper on this. And that was from that moment now, every time I enter in the room or we're in the meeting, I say, I say what do you think about this? So it completely changed now where I was like the expert, the IT payment expert, I become completely um, another type of expert in terms of the interaction is completely diverse. That was my short example. Wonderful. No, that was great. No, thank you very much. That's brilliant. I, um, I can relate to that myself, actually. So for me, the applicability 
um, reminds me of two different things. One is with my own organization, which is an organization of one person, essentially. I have a part-time assistant and the strategy content in the course got me to be really, um, hold myself accountable to having a good business plan, having a strategy, really thinking about what the differentiators of my organization were, how it didn't make sense for me to try and compete with organizations that, for example, might offer a dozen coaches to a really big company. Instead, my impact was much more about having an impact on a smaller team, perhaps within a large company or not. And having um, the tools to really conceptualize that and put it together has led to, I mean, I won't get into numbers, but it's been great for revenue. And it's been great in terms of my own sort of confident approach to the type of business I will say yes to and what I will pass on and refer to someone else with a lot of goodwill. So that's been really wonderful. Um, and the other thing that I find helpful and Saeed's example reminded me of this is when I'm talking to other companies about their cultures and about their strategies, I have a much more um, useful and sophisticated vocabulary around strategy. And I have examples and I have frameworks and I can send follow-up information. And that makes a really big difference. And it's also that really satisfying moment of being able to explain something in a way that I perhaps wouldn't have before, but I can see people saying, oh yes, that makes sense. That's what we're seeing and that's how this fits together. And can you tell us more? Um, so that's been really wonderful as well. Great, really good to hear. And, you know, I speak to quite a few people who are business owners or thinking about it. So it's, it's really nice to hear that how you found it. Yeah, useful. Stacey, do you want to jump in? Yeah, there, there are two very concrete examples. Um, from each of the modules so far. So in module <laughs> one, I was able to apply that while the module was going on because um, there were things regarding motivation. And in my workplace at the time, there were stumbling blocks to, run to motivation that people were going through. And in one-on-one -on -one meetings, it's hard to kind of navigate those. And in that module, it gave me a strategy that I immediately used with one of my supervisees and she took it, ran with it, and had a successful uh, uh, go at something that was challenging for her. So it was beautiful to see how she responded to that and also for her to come back and say how impactful that conversation had been for her and that that was something that she would remember. remember. The second thing um, was module two, which was very focused on application and using our own organizations. Well, of course, I was interviewing for a new organization. And I was able to actually use some of the strategy in my presentation as part of my interview. Now, I don't know if that got me the job, but I will say that uh, the piece about the, you might remember from module two, the two by two, uh, introducing that as a way of exploring our strategy and what would the world be like if we followed you know, one component versus another component, high versus low. The panel was impressed by that <laughs> and asked me questions about that. So it, it certainly contributed to me even understanding the organization I was going into and at that time interviewing for. Uh, it's immediately applicable, absolutely. Good to hear, particularly because you're only halfway through. So you found use, you know, good use as module one and two. So looking good for ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, you know, um, Laura, I think for, for me, it was that, that topic of leadership in, in dilemma. Um, so the, the company that I work for, it's a science and technology driven company. So it, th there is this natural tendency to always try to get that one perfect answer to the problem that you're trying to solve. And to, to slowly move the leadership team that I work with away from trying to find that one perfect answer to, to having a more agile strategic position I think that that was that was a key thing to not to not try to get it right forever but try to get it right in the moment and um it, I, I, it, there is there is this 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 learning process i think that it, that this conversation triggered in the organization that we are moving away from from perfection more towards flexibility now yeah no absolutely no they're all really good examples no thank you very much um I think, uh, you know, another thing I know a lot of when I speak to people, um, a real benefit is the, the community and the network that you um, that you have as part of this program. And certainly for me, when I see everybody coming together, you know, joining together for each module, the participation in class, the time that you spend at 
lunch and coffee and the college dinners, it seems like you form very strong connections and um, friendships uh, with your network and, and uh, a lot of sort of satisfaction and help comes from that. I wonder if you guys can sort of share, you know, how, yeah, how was that experience for you personally? I'd love to jump in and share about that, but I, th I've thought about this and um, the way I think is a little unusual, not on this Zoom call, but in other Zoom calls, you'll have reactions. And each of the reactions kind of reminds me something about something I gained from this community. So one of the reactions that you'll have on Zoom is that hand that is clapping. And that reminds me of the part of the community that we don't think we don't talk about a lot and that's the faculty and staff. And it's clear that you, Laura, some of you on this call may have had this experience with her already, just responsive, really supporting your learning experience there for you. IT, everyone in every position is really supporting the learning experience. So applause for that. Another reaction is a thumbs up. Um, this to me speaks to uh, the curriculum and how it's put together and how we navigate the curriculum together. Um, uh, very, again, a little bit intimidating for me coming from a human service background, but surprisingly people focused. And I really appreciated that, that the content wasn't, um, as Bjorn was saying, you know, just theoretical. It's how people function within an organization, really emphasizing the fact that uh, in organizations, in communities, among communities, these don't exist in the abstract. These involve people. Another reaction is the smiley face. You will have fun. To be honest with you, usually people who come to these programs um, not only are really thoughtful people, uh, the people I've come across in my cohort are particularly kind, they're funny, they uh, enjoy having a good time. Those moments between classes um, or after class when you get together and just, you know, taught, I've had a lot of hilarious uh, times <laughs> during this program. It's, it's studying, but there's fun as well. Another quick uh, reaction is surprise. And I just wanted to run through just a couple of things that were surprising to me. Um, and these are not community-based things, but these are things that I heard or people found out through trial and error. Um, you don't have to convert a lot of money. Um, I, people sometimes make the mistake of do a conversion before they go over there. There's a bus from the airport. There's tipping differences coming from Vegas where you tip somebody if they just, you know, look at you, you know, it's very different in the UK. Uh, the hotels are very close. It's very walkable. Um, and there's the opportunity for some people to stay on campus if they want that experience. I don't know the logistics of that, but that was something um, that people discovered along the way too. And finally, you know, one of those reactions is the heart. And it's, I think it's tempting in some classes maybe to be competitive or let me say a smart comment over Saeed's comments or some, whatever. That's not the case in the, my cohort experience. People were um, building on other people's comments, learning from what other people had to contribute. It was truly and has been, and I expect will continue to be a truly collaborative experience where we're all learning together and the support and encouragement that I got from classmates is something that just sincerely touches me. I mean, I just feel so grateful uh, for some of those uh, conversations and, and the encouragement that I got. So that's my, when you think of those emojis, <laughs> <laughs> every time you use a reaction, you're going to think about this program and all of the things um, that are benefits of it. No, exactly. No, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I really, yeah, some great points there. If anyone wants to add anything or, yeah, about their experience. Yeah, um, maybe we, um, Ellie and I can comment a little bit on on last year's cohort, and so Ellie, jump in if you feel that I'm misrepresenting it. But I think our our cohort was a little bit special the year, at least, in that for some half half the course, for some three quarters of the course, were purely virtual. And I think the module where we managed to get together was module four. Um, and, and for me, this. This was sort of the highlight, <laughs> because one of the, the reasons why I wanted to join the program, apart from the content, the ap applicability, was sort of the location. And I was sort of somehow yearning to go to Oxford and see it live. I had, I had never been before. And just being there with all these people at, at this, this great university, having a good night out after class was just, was just, just great. And um, 
I have to also um, make a, a shout out to our course reps who, despite that virtual setup for the first sort of half, three quarters of a year, really managed to pull the cohort together. There was, I, I think, I can't remember how many WhatsApp groups I was in. That, um, and the, the, <laughs> That's it. The, the WhatsApp message traffic before the exams about how do I quote? And maybe that rings a bell with Said and Stacey. So how do I quote this? How do I quote that? that it was crazy, right? And I can I can fully support what Stacey said. There is this bit of fun in it. And um, and for me, that that is that is quite a critical element because I, I don't really want to spend so many hours at home doing additional work, coursework in lecture, if it's super dull and boring. And it, that was not the case. No, that's really nice to hear. And actually, yeah, you raise a, an excellent point about the hybrid nature. I think, so your class was started and, and ran two modules completely online. And then we, we finished the year in hybrid and you're right, module four. I remember seeing you all come together as the largest group yet. And everybody sort of, you, you'd known each other for such a long time, but you were finally in the same room together. And it was, yeah, it was amazing to see that energy and excitement um, across the, the whole week. It was, yeah, a really wonderful thing. Uh, something that I can add on, on top of what everything has been said is uh, also the, um, um, and you mentioned it, Laura, in the introduction, the diversity within the group, the cohort. I, I think it's, it's really something that uh, we, 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 we can't underestimate because no matter the, the different, so, so big variety of, of profiles, industries, countries, positions, it's not a matter of like, okay, just a kind of executive uh, training, but no, you, you have people um, working in uh, small companies, you have people working in big, big, big uh, companies, organization. And, and that's in, for me, that was something very inspiring because it gave us also the, the perspective completely different. It changed the, the, the perspective in terms of, okay, regarding um, an, or motivation of employees, regarding this or that topic, you can really benefit from a large, large um, experience and, and feedback. And that was really something that I really appreciate. Now, when it comes to the, the cohort, of course, there is everything during the course, during the lecture, during the self-study, but there is also a lot among the, the people, uh, as Stacy and John mentioned it, we, we keep in touch, of course. And um, my network has suddenly um, grown from, with 60 people all around the world. And um, it's, it's amazing how we can, we can just, through um, a small chat, launch a question and for sure we get an answer. So it's really, really appreciated. And how have you stayed in, in contact? I know you mentioned WhatsApp and things. Are you, do you, have you formed study groups? I mean, and yeah, what sort of different ways are you all interacting with each other in between the modules? Or, or, or why, yeah. Oh, then I can, if I, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, if I'm just gonna continue, then yeah, I, I would say there are two, two approaches, at least that mm. uh, um, I contribute to is, on one hand, there is clearly study, study groups, that help us where we discuss the topic you know, in, and we keep exchanging on the, whatever the, the material we are reviewing and reflecting. And on the other hand, there is also a kind of like uh, mini uh, groups where um, of course you get much more affinity with uh, someone from, uh, from the, main, say, uh, the same sector as, as you or someone uh, working in another country where you might have attachment, etc. So there are, there are suddenly, you, you start to, to, to build different ne networks with um, either really topic around the, the, tem the tema that we are having in the, in the program or also completely different and, and completely nothing to do with the, the, the program. That was my, my excuse. <laughs> great, great, thank you. Yeah, that's very relatable. I, I think the only thing I just say on this sort of idea of community and study groups and everything else is the topic is obviously organizational leadership. So you have a group of people who are already very interested in that, but we're also an organization of ourselves, the cohort. So it was really interesting to see how we would apply some of the things that we learned in class. Like um, I think Bjorn shouted out the class reps, the each cohort has two elected representatives. And 
ours in the cohort I was involved with um, were really adept at taking on board, you know, feedback from the group at the end of each day and bringing it back to the school, perhaps, or just having a conversation about it, surveying everybody in between. They'd have a newsletter that would go out. We'd also have, as has been touched on, study groups based on different regions in the case of our cohort and, you know, little bilateral meetings on the side. Like here in New York, I live near to one or two other people who were part of the, the cohort. And that's been great. Like we see each other fairly regularly. Um, and on our WhatsApp groups, we get nice pictures from around the world when people are visiting each other it's like gaining you know 50 or 60 new friends worldwide it's really nice but i would also add to that you you don't have to engage with all that if you don't want to you can sort of engage with as much or as little as you want it can change over time a lot of us are you know we're all busy we're all leaders in our own ways but some of us are also you know parents or have other obligations so don't feel oh this is just too much for me like i it seems like a full-time endeavor there is a lot and it could be full-time if you really wanted it to be but most of the time we recognize that we're humans as well and we're not going to join every single study session or respond to everyone WhatsApp message. And that's okay. I think as a group of, since it's a business school program, as a group of executives and leaders in other ways, we give each other some grace when it comes to how much we'll engage with things. Yeah, excellent. And, and actually sort of, again, connecting to that, um, how have you all found that balance of studying so when you're not in the in in, in Oxford or, or in, in a module week, you're, you know, you're back at home and you're trying to balance um, work, home life, studying, how did you find that? Um, yeah. Silence. <laughs> Go on, find the balance. No, yeah. on, no balance on. is this. Hey, well, I think you do have to, uh, you do have to uh, uh, set some, you know, priorities and some boundaries. I mean, you still can go, I will say that you still can go through this program and have a life. You can continue your other life and, um, and at the same time, take this seriously. I do want to also acknowledge our class reps because that's one strategy for striking balance too. If there's focused questions that you have that are about the program, you know, you know that point of contact as opposed to, um, you know, wondering. So they're a great conduit to focused questions, which can help you um, uh, make some decisions about your time. But I think with coming to this meeting, you have an opportunity to plan ahead, um, get in place some things that you can get in place to carve out the time uh, to devote to studying. I think thinking about uh, how things cycle uh, through the modules, pre and post module, um, just all of those things, I think it's what you learn in the classroom about being a leader, but it's also how you navigate the program that also fosters certain skills about decision making and prioritizing the, and those kinds of things. But we've talked about the friends that you make in the program. I would say whatever your support network is, let them know what you're planning to do because they also want to help you too. Um, the people in my life have stepped up to help me in different ways. So leverage your existing support network as well. Excellent point. And, and have you found that there are some peaks and troughs? So I, I um, you know, obviously the month or so before you're due back in Oxford is, is, is fairly intense with the pre-reading and the assessments and such. Um, but perhaps there are times when, you know, studying is, is not such a focus. Is that fair to say? Did you find that you were able to sort of manage some other commitments at the same time as doing the programme? Yes, um, I, I can I can share with you. So, so um, I have two bodyguards, huh? two sons, and um, um, a quite a busy life. Nevertheless, it, it's a matter of, of course of priorities, but it's also a, a, a matter of a motivation. And because the, the subject, because the topics, because a lot of um, items that we shared here with you are really really excellent. Um, I, I think it, it's. It's something that is manageable, for sure. I keep driving, taking my kids to the swimming pool on Saturday. I keep doing a lot, a lot of activities and still find time to sit and, and, and read and learn about items that I was completely not aware of. Um, and, and something I, I just wanted to share with the audience here is the way that the program is articulated. You have these four modules, 
with between the two modules enough time either to prepare for, for the assessment, to review, to, to learn, and to read also the material for the next module. So really something, because I'm not sure that we wish, yeah, we, 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 we just discuss it briefly in, in the introduction, but the way the module are scheduled during the entire year, make it easier, make it much more uh, manageable. In, from, that's from my experience. Really because you know when you have to book to be in the course, you know when you will be uh, getting the assessment uh, and uh, the material to, to prepare the next module. So all these small elements are actually are crucial for the way we can manage both a work and, and a life balance. Absolutely. I mean, assessments are a big one. I know it's certainly something that once people you know, start uh, are naturally quite worried about, particularly the first one. Ellie and, and you and you've obviously survived all of them. I mean, can you speak a little bit about how you approached your final assignment at the end and sort of any advice you would get, perhaps give to, to people? I think, I think like, um, I want to build on what Sa Saeed said. Mm. So um, the, 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 the final integrative assessment, like, like everything else on the course, so when the modules happen, when the reading comes out, it's all predictable. So for me the key element to get through it without as little stress as possible was to, to just plan ahead very well so i i made sure that i reserved some time throughout the week some some months in advance so that i knew that i had some hours to, to spend on the the assignment um on a, on a personal note what i learned is that um um I think it, it, it pays off to have a good research research question and to be super clear about it. <laughs> I got, got a bit of feedback on that one and uh, it, it helped reduce my own level of fuzziness. But the, the, I think the, the, the thing here is plan ahead. Um, don't, don't try to do anything at the last minute because it just creates this unnecessary degree of stress. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I would also add in, in addition to like the importance of as best you can planning, like I think, I think what a lot of newer students might find or people considering the program if they move forward will find is you can plan around the, um, the content of the module because it is to Saeed's point, it's quite predictable to Bjorn's point, you can set aside time in advance generally. Um, but it's everything else in your life that you can't really do that with. So in some ways, the diploma is like the easy part, the you know, kids getting sick or quarantining for COVID is a whole other thing, but it is doable. And I think I would liken it a bit to like having kids and work. I mean, we all work from home to a degree now, but working outside the home, it's that you just at a certain point, you have to accept that nothing will be completely perfect it probably wouldn't have been even without kids but recognizing that there are a few trade-offs here and there and I want to really emphasize that pretty much everyone I've interacted with in the program and if there are others I certainly haven't heard about it would say that the payoff and the reward is so great that they would do it all over again. Like they would say, you know what? It was a bit hard sometimes. There were times when I was a bit tired or times when the workload was a bit heavier than I might have liked, but I got out more than what I put in. Um, and I think one thing that was a little bit um, surprising, not, to, not just to people in the US, but to folks who hadn't encountered the UK higher education system and how strict the grading process is and how hard some of the exams were. I mean, first of all, that's, that's all manageable. I don't want to scare people off. That being said, I think that's a, it's a testament to the quality of the product that you're getting, so to speak, to put it in more sort of blunt terms, like you're, you're getting the best, most, you know, academically rigorous qualification you can get, and you're able to do it sort of in your free time, so to speak. And I think that's a trade off that, you know, asked me in an exam week, and I may not have been as thrilled with, but the week after when I got my results and everything else, I'm like, you know, I really worked hard for this. And it feels good. It doesn't feel like I just went to a business school and bought myself a qualification. It feels like I really walked away with a quality thing. Um, and I think that's really important to recognize as well. Like it's, you really can't beat that side of it. No, absolutely, that's really nice to hear. Um, yeah, particularly somebody, you know, yeah, you've, you've walked that path, you've gone through it all and now, you know, you're, you've got the award and just the graduation to, to look forward to. Um, I will say, so we are coming towards the end. So if anybody does have any burning questions to put forward to the panel, please speak up, pop them on chat. Um, but otherwise, sort of a final question to all of you are sort of any final thoughts, tips, advice to you know, people on this call who are thinking about, yeah, moving forward with the programme. 
any or any final thoughts from from anybody that would just like to share I just remember I can empathize with people who are on this call. I remember maybe a year ago being on this call and being a prospective student and hearing all of this. And uh, one comment that was made really stuck with me and I believe it's 100% true. One of the presenters, and I'm sorry, I forget her name. I believe she was a, a physician in Canada called the program transformative. And that's not a word that I just, you know, throw around or you, so I've made note of that. But in fact, the program is very transformative. I mean, you, I will, and I'm only halfway through it, but I feel like I will come out of this because I already am um, very different from how I came into it. And others who are not even enrolled in the program are benefiting. Um, from that. So the, it's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> uh, and, and it spreads um, uh, better than a corona variant. <laughs> I would say your word. But it, it truly is a transformative experience. I went through it. I went through the first module online and I felt I got such high value that way. And then when I came for the second module in person, it was just that much higher, but both of them were very rich experiences, and um, I I have no regrets about uh, coming into this program. Lovely, great, thank you so much. And and just to rebound on the on your your term, uh, <laughs> Stacey, about the transformation. Yes, if I, I have one tip for every everyone uh, in, in this audience is. Whatever, you, if you feel that you, you, you arrived somewhere from a career point of view at a crossroad, whatever you feel that, okay, maybe now it's time to, to look for the next move, what would be this next move? Then definitely please read in details this program and, and, and find your way to, to, to attend it because it's worth this, this. It helps a lot to maybe not bring the answer, but give gives through the people, through the, the content of the course, through the, the academics, and also through um, the organization and people like uh, Laura, which is very, she's very, very helpful in different uh, situations, but it gives you at least some framework to find your own answer. That's my tip. For Lovely, thank you so much, thank you. Yeah, I would, I would just add to that and say definitely endorse the transformative angle. I would say there's a lot about the program that is predictable in the sense of, you know, what broad strokes what you would be getting, you know, the different kind of topics for each module, and you know, you know, how you might play, apply that to your work world. But then there's also perhaps as much, if not more, that you don't know what you're getting. And it's all positive, right? It's the element of transformation that Stacey talked about. It's um, opportunities, like even just speaking on a panel like this is an enormous honor, right? Like getting to do different things, meet with different people, form connections with people around the world. There's things that will happen that you just couldn't have predicted, you know, a year ago when Stacey said she was sitting as a participant in this panel. Um, but being able to, uh, to take that forward is really a special opportunity. So no regrets from my point of view. Okay, excellent. Be on any final thoughts? Um, I think the, one of the positive side effects, apart from everything that's been, been said was that um, when I started the course, I had been out of university for something like 20 years. So it, it's been quite a while. And uh, it, it is sort of, an, I think, a nice fitness training for your brain as well to get into this, this learning mode, into this mode of curiosity to look at things that you might not have explored otherwise. So it, it is also this, this um, I don't know, yeah, I would call it mental fitness element of it, right? to get, get back to the books, to, to studying, reading complicated texts, having intellectual debate. Yeah, it was great fun. Great, good mental agility. Thank you so much. Well, um, we are pretty much at the end of the session. So thank you so much to all of you for your really insightful um, yeah, thoughts and comments. It's been so lovely. I do just have a couple of final slides to run through with people about some key dates um, that are coming up for the rest of the year. If we are able to bring up the presentation, but yeah, thank you so much to the four of you for, for, for your time.
Um, and I'm just going to briefly speak about the application process for those people who um, would like to apply. So um, you, we are now accepting applications to join the next class in, in 2023. Um, and if you would like to apply, you do so um, online using the link on our website. I'll just briefly run through um, things that we need from you as part of the process. So you need to include an up-to-date CV, um, two references, most people are professional, but you can include one academic if, if you studied recently, that's absolutely fine. Um, we need to include your transcripts for every degree that you list on your CV. So that's the breakdown in marks and modules um, from, your, from your degree. And then there are two short essays of 500 words. Um, you might have to submit evidence of English language ability if English isn't your first language, but there are some exemptions for this. So if you've recently studied in English or if you work in English on a daily basis, again, you can find more information on our website or feel free to speak to me if you have any questions on that. Please can have the next slide. Great. Um, so the year is going pretty quickly and, and there are a few key dates that I want to mention. So. Um, we accept applications on a rolling basis, so you can actually apply at any time, but there are um, dates to sort of bear in mind, a big one being the 26th of September, because that's the deadline for our scholarships. So we have three scholarships per class, one women's award and two directors award, and they all offer £10,000 towards the programme fee. So if you'd like to be considered, you would need to apply by the 26th of um, September and include uh, an additional scholarship statement as part of your application, and, and you can find more information on our website. You can see that the final deadline is the 2nd of January. My advice would be to not leave it that late if you can. The programme might be full. Um, and we've already seen a, a good number of applications. So um, yes, just a few dates to bear in mind. Uh, and then the next slide, please. Lovely. So in terms of next steps, I really hope that um, the session has been useful today. If you'd like to learn more, you can uh, request a meeting with me and I'll be happy to answer any further questions or send me an email. Feel free to send me your CV for review if you'd like any feedback on that. It'd be really nice to hear more about your background and, and we can set up a call if, also, if that's helpful. And obviously feel free to start an application using the link on our website and my contact details are here. So please do get in touch. Um, and yeah, the last slide is just to say thank you so much to everybody for their time today. Um, it's really nice to see the four of you here together. Um, I really enjoyed the session today and a big, big thank you for all of your time. I uh, look forward to seeing Stacey and Said in two weeks. And yeah, Ellie and Bjorn, thank you so, so much. And a, a really big thank you to everybody joining the session. I hope it's been helpful and hope to see you in Oxford in future. So thank you very much, everybody.